Hey everyone, today we'll recap a 2024 thriller romantic movie named Miller's Girl. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy. The story opens with Cairo, a young girl whose parents, both lawyers working abroad, have left her alone in their Tennessee house. Cairo finds solace in writing, using it as a means to unwind from the solitude of her situation. Despite her isolation, she navigates her way to school each day, traversing through the woods wearing a mini skirt and high heels. Upon arriving at school, Cairo encounters Jonathan Miller, their teacher. Jonathan is a middle-aged man who once harbored dreams of becoming an author, but ultimately failed. Despite the difference in their ages, Jonathan assumes a paternal role in Cairo's life. However, Cairo privately admires Jonathan. As Cairo arrives early for class, Jonathan asks her to start reading the books they'll study for the semester. He's surprised when Cairo says she's already read all 12 required books. They chat about literature until Winnie, Cairo's friend, and Jonathan's repeating student arrives and invites Cairo to eat with her. After the girls leave, Jonathan, curious about Cairo's reading choices, checks out the books on her desk. Suddenly, his friend Boris shows up, grabs a book Jonathan was reading, and begins teasingly reading aloud an explicit passage. Jonathan tries to stop Boris from reading the naughty part, but Boris won't listen. Boris sees a book Jonathan wrote. Jonathan is surprised to find out Cairo has his book. When Jonathan arrived home, he found his wife, Beatrice, engrossed in her computer work. He tried to chat with her, but she seemed too busy to talk. Jonathan called her right away to share his excitement about one of his students reading his book. While they were talking, Beatrice's co-worker Amy called her urgently. After the call, Jonathan flirted with his wife over the phone, and they enjoyed some drinks together. Things started heating up between them, but just as they are about to become intimate, Amy calls again, leaving Jonathan frustrated. The next day, Jonathan confided in Boris about his disappointing weekend and how Amy's interruptions ruined a romantic moment with Beatrice. Boris teased Jonathan about his mishaps and proceeded to talk about his own life. As they chatted, they noticed Cairo emerging from the woods nearby. Jonathan, still feeling agitated from the previous day, stared at her as she approached. Cairo, unaware of the tension, greeted them with a friendly hello after removing her headphones. Feeling sexually frustrated, Jonathan tries to maintain his composure by engaging in casual conversation with Cairo. When Winnie claimed to have accidentally dropped her things in the locker room at the same time, Boris saw through her ploy. He approached her and inquired about her needs, realizing she was trying to seduce him. Noticing this, Cairo tells Winnie she's quite bold. Winnie tries to give Cairo ideas for an essay, but Cairo thinks they seem too ordinary. Suddenly, Winnie suggests Cairo try charming teachers for essay material. Cairo, feeling confused, points out the big age gap between them, finding it strange. However, Winnie, being flirtatious, reassures Cairo that it's okay. She suggests that Jonathan seems like a nice and gentle man, making him a good choice for Cairo's first date, as she won't feel any discomfort. Despite Cairo's initial reservations, Winnie's playful persistence piques Cairo's interest even more. Winnie continues to tease Cairo, mentioning Jonathan's longing looks at her, which leaves Cairo feeling embarrassed and flustered. As the days go by, Kyo's interest in sex grows. As Cairo's desire becomes overwhelming, she yearns to experience it fully. In class, her eyes frequently seek out Jonathan, signaling her attraction to him. One day, Jonathan quietly approaches her from behind and whispers for her to meet him in his office after class. In Jonathan's office, he conversed with Boris and invited him to join him and his wife for dinner. Boris agreed, and they had a great time dancing before departing. Cairo happened to catch Jonathan dancing, and after Boris left, Jonathan tried to mimic Boris's dance moves. They shared a laugh, and then they discussed Winnie. Jonathan expressed his approval of their friendship and continued to talk about Cairo's living situation. The teacher also congratulates Cairo on her excellent work in one of her recent pieces of writing. He is impressed by her ability to memorize certain lines from her writing. Recognizing Cairo's talent, the professor asks her to write a short story in the style of her favorite author. He believes that if she excels in this task, she will pass the entire semester with flying colors. Cairo views this as a perfect opportunity and eagerly agrees to take on the challenge. Suddenly, Cairo surprises her professor by revealing that she has read his books, leaving him speechless. She quotes a part of his book, just as she memorized part of what Cairo had written. The professor is delighted and confesses that the book she quoted was the first he ever wrote, which holds a special significance for him. Miller admits that he hasn't written anything in a long time. He explains that since getting married, his life has become more ordinary, lacking the material to inspire a book. 
Cairo, believing he is simply uninspired, challenges him to find that spark again and start writing once more. He invites Cairo to meet that weekend to further discuss the short story. At the meeting spot, Jonathan surprises Cairo from behind. As they engage in conversation, Jonathan remarks on how they've been honing their literary skills together for a while. While a poet named Elliot performs, Cairo steals glances at Jonathan, who listens attentively. They later critique Elliot's poetry, exchanging thoughts and opinions. As Cairo smokes, she offers Jonathan a cigarette, which he accepts. On a new school day, Cairo decides to change how she looks. She brings coffee to Boris and Miller, and they all seem more confident, playing around and sharing a cigarette. Cairo tells Winnie that even though the professor didn't say anything about her new look, she knows he liked it. Later, Cairo tells Miller she wants to write her story like Henry Miller, a famous author known for writing about love and sex. Miller worries it might not be a good idea because it could cause trouble at school. But Cairo thinks it could make her story more interesting. After thinking about it, Miller trusts Cairo and lets her go ahead with her plan. Later, Jonathan's phone buzzes with a text from his wife, inviting him on a weekend getaway. Cairo approaches to discuss her short story, but Jonathan Jonathan, preoccupied with thoughts of his wife, quickly approves her writing without giving it much consideration. When they're alone, Winnie teases her friend, joking that Cairo is trying to seduce her professor. She exaggerates, pretending to mimic Cairo's actions, much to her friend's amusement. As Cairo frantically searches for her missing phone, Jonathan's plans are repeatedly disrupted by Amy's persistent calls. Surprised to hear Cairo's voice when his phone rings, Jonathan learns that she accidentally placed her phone in his bag. As they converse, Jonathan's wife expresses frustration over their postponed weekend getaway. Volunteering to return Cairo's phone to her house, Jonathan quickly agrees, despite the incoming rain. As he makes his way there, a heavy downpour suddenly begins. Upon arriving, Jonathan spots Cairo walking outside in a seductive dress amidst the rain. Locking eyes, Jonathan and Cairo share a moment of intense attraction as she approaches him in the pouring rain. Overwhelmed by passion, they embrace and share a passionate kiss. As Jonathan and Cairo found themselves in a daze after their intense moment, Jonathan's thoughts were consumed by her. Suddenly, Cairo sent Jonathan his midterm test, snapping him out of his reverie. Waking up from his distracted state, Jonathan's wife urged him to leave her alone as she attempted Tended to other matters. Jonathan left and retreated to a small house near theirs. There, he printed out Cairo's finished work and began reading it immediately. Engrossed in the captivating story with its adult themes, Jonathan's excitement peaked as he envisioned Cairo in the scenes, fueling his desire. Unable to resist any longer, Jonathan hastily removed his pants and makes himself happy. The following day, Cairo arrives in class dressed in an enticing outfit, but Jonathan's attitude towards her has noticeably changed. He doesn't greet her with the same warmth as before. Sensing something is amiss, Cairo asks Jonathan if everything is all right. Jonathan expresses his disappointment with the explicit content of Cairo's writing. Cairo tries to explain that she rejected the explicit content, but Jonathan remains unmoved. He refuses to listen to her explanations, and ultimately decides to reject both her work and their relationship. Jonathan even criticized Cairo's work and expressed regret for having trusted her. When Cairo attempted to convey her true feelings, Jonathan's refusal to acknowledge them only fueled her anger. Cairo lashed out at Jonathan, labeling his own works as average and dull. Cairo's frustration grew, and she dared Jonathan to give her poor grades on her tests. Cairo gets really mad and starts insulting Jonathan. Jonathan remained steadfast in his belief in their roles as master and student. She says he's just jealous because he can't do what she's done. After this tense moment, Cairo storms out of the classroom and leaves her story in a school administrator's mailbox. Miller heads home and shares the challenging day he had with his wife, detailing his encounter with Cairo and her story. His wife becomes intrigued by Cairo's writing, leading to a heated discussion between the couple that inadvertently involves Boris. Meanwhile, Cairo seeks comfort in a drink with her friend Winnie after facing rejection from Miller. As the evening progresses and the drinks flow, they playfully decide to take compromising photos to tease Boris, adding a touch of humor to their night out. Just then, Jonathan received a call from the principal's office. Beatrice handed him the phone, and he listened as they accused him of having an inappropriate relationship with Cairo. Jonathan denied the accusation and reassured Beatrice that it wasn't true. However, Beatrice warned him about the potential potential consequences, mentioning that he could lose both his job and his wife if the allegations were found to be true. The following day, Cairo was absent from class as she met with the principal. Meanwhile, Jonathan carried on teaching. Winnie seemed visibly upset by Cairo's absence. After class, she approached Jonathan expressing how much Cairo meant to her. Despite Winnie's efforts to make him feel guilty, Jonathan remained unaffected, unwilling to engage in any discussion on the matter. As Cairo's plans begin to unfold, the teacher is summoned to a meeting with the school management. 
Both Cairo and Professor Miller are questioned extensively. They answer questions about their interactions during classes and whether they had any close encounters outside of school. Cairo's responses strongly imply that there was a connection between them, causing the professor to feel concerned about his professional future and reputation. He finds himself in a very difficult position as a result of Cairo's statements. Upon finding Cairo's statements unchanged, the principal decided to suspend Jonathan. Boris approached him after leaving the office, expressing his disappointment and advising Jonathan to be mindful of his limits to avoid further escalating the situation. After delivering his message, Boris left to give Jonathan some space. When Jonathan got home, he reluctantly told Beatrice he was suspended. She quickly asked if something happened, but he denied it, only admitting he gave Cairo special treatment. Beatrice didn't buy it and kept asking until he confessed. When she asked if he had feelings for Cairo, Jonathan hesitated and couldn't deny it. This made them argue loudly, saying hurtful things to each other. Beatrice, furious, stormed out, saying she wanted a divorce. At the same time, Winnie spoke to Cairo about the potential consequences of her actions, warning that she might cause Jonathan to lose his job. However, Cairo brushed off these concerns. She saw it as her biggest accomplishment and even included it in her college essay. Cairo explained to Winnie that Jonathan didn't think highly of her, so this was her way of getting back at him. Cairo's essay painted a vivid picture of the potential consequences awaiting Jonathan's relationship with Cairo. As she concluded her writing, the movie ends there.